Hey everyone, welcome to Rugged Outdoors Guide. My name is Pete, and today we're going to be talking about something that every good canoeist should be aware of how to do, and that is to put knee pads when, for when you're solo canoeing, or tandem as well, but it's an option, right? So you don't have to sit all the time, you can kneel, and kneeling is one of the classic positions that uh, some of the purists will just, you know, say that that's, that's what you got to do. So I like them because I switch between sitting, kneeling, I kneel like this, I kneel standing up, well, standing up on my knees straight up like this, and then I sit quite often. So anyways, this is my Bell Solo Magic Canoe that I do not have any knee pads on. Really, really, really want to have some knee pads. So I'm going to show you guys how to do it. Let's get right into it. Okay, so the first thing you want to do actually is get a pair of knee pads. Where do you get them? Well, you can get them on Amazon. I mean, I've got some links below if you're interested. Um, this particular set I got from a dollar store. Now, depending on what your local dollar store is going to have as inventory, uh, they may or may not be there. So uh, you, can want, you want to go take a look. They're basically just gardening knee pads. So they actually are knee pads. I've cut them off here. Right here there was a, a handle it was, and it was a bit longer, but this is about how long I want them. I want mine about these dimensions, so that's about um, 9 or 10 inches the long way and about 6 inches the other way. Some people like a whole pad that goes right across the whole canoe. That's fine. I have no problem with that, but I just want to have these separately because water will flow through them. Uh, from one side to the other a little bit better in case there is water buildup and I just don't need that much of the pad. I, I'm just going to use the minimum amount that I need. So what do we do? What are the first steps? Well, so once you have your, your pad, and by the way, regarding the pad material itself, there are pads that you can buy that feel pretty pretty good, but what I've done a few tests myself where I put something heavy and squished it for about a day or two, and what happens is some of them, some of the cheaper ones, when you when you take the, the weight off, it's it's pretty much gone right through and there's no padding left. And so eh, I don't know how that's gonna react after eight hours of kneeling on it and then the next day and the next day. Uh, that's I don't know. So I mine is a little bit thicker than the one I originally wanted to use. Alright, so first thing we want to do is position them. And so I'm not going to really go into the details of that because you know your own canoe and your own, you know, body position better than I can uh, determine. But I know for me, I've been playing around with it a little bit here and I've got it somewhere right about here. So I can stand up on my knees. Now, now by the way guys, it's important to note that behind the seat where your feet are going to be, especially if you have a solo canoe, um, your heels kind of have to be able to, to stick up kind of like mine are right now. See, if you go too far forward with the knee pads, well now, look at your feet are kind of cramped on, under your seat. So you've got to go back far enough so that there's at least some movement and you have some level of comfort when you're paddling. Okay, so that's kind of where I find myself right about now and still trying to determine exactly where I want it. I don't want mine too far up the side, but I also don't need them right in the middle. So I think this is pretty good. So the next thing you want to do, once you've determined the location, probably want a china marker like this of some kind. A pen or a pencil is not going to work on Kevlar. And so I'm just going to mark the corners. And it just kind of gives you an idea of where you're going to prepare the surfaces. Okay, so I've got it marked. I've got both pads marked four corners. Now what we have to do is prepare the surface for adhesion. All right, so the next thing to do, we're going to prepare the surface. And what I've done is just got 100 grit sandpaper. All right, it's pretty, pretty, this one's kind of used, but whatever, it doesn't matter. So the idea is to just 
rough up the surface slightly. I'm not sure exactly how much, but just something other than really, really shiny, right? That's what you'll want. So I'm not going to take you through every moment that I'm doing this, but anyway, that's what you want to do. And the other thing is too, with regards to the, the pads, I'm even going to just wipe my sandpaper on that. It's not really glossy, but any more roughing that I can do, the more the better. So anyway, you can rough up the pad if your pad has a bit of a coating on it, which mine is a little bit sheen-like. It's not totally like a sponge or anything like that. It's not like the edge of it here. It's got a bit of a uh, sort of a coating. It's sort of finished. And so I'm going to rough that up a bit, and then I'm going to continue. I'm going to rough up these sections where it's going to be glued down. Okay, so I've just brought the canoe into the shade. I didn't want it sitting out in the sun baking, I guess, once I put the, the glue on. And the glue we're gonna be using is from LePage, it's contact cement. Uh, the heavy duty stuff is the stuff you'll probably want to use. I would say don't even bother with anything else. So this is sort of the standard in the industry. I've talked to a few outfitters and they use LePage heavy duty contact cement. So I'm not gonna reinvent the wheel. I'll just kind of show you how it's done, all right? So the unusual thing about this, many of you know this already, but for those of you who might not, contact cement is kind of an unusual adhesive in that what we're gonna do is we're gonna coat both sides that are gonna to stick together, right? So I'm gonna put a coat on the uh, Kevlar canoe floor, and then I'm gonna put a coat on one side of the knee pad that I'm gonna stick down, and then Contrary to, it just kind of goes against the grain to think that you have to let it dry before you put the pieces together. That's what you do. You let it dry for at least 15 minutes, no more than 60 minutes. So I'm going to shoot for about 15 minutes, maybe 20 at the most. And then once you put it down, that's it. There's no repositioning it. And unlike wet glue, you can't kind of squish it around a little bit. Once, once you touch it, it's there. All right. So let's apply the adhesive. I'm just using a brush, as you can see. Don't know if that's the best way, but it seems to seems to be working fairly well. Hard to see where I've done and where I haven't done because it's not any sort of color. And I don't exactly know how much to apply, but I'm gonna do it pretty liberally. I'm not trying to save any money on this stuff. Just hope it doesn't uh, cause any problems putting more rather than less, but I'm, I'm guessing it won't. Okay, so that's about it for now. I'm gonna start my timer going. Actually, I already did, taking about three minutes to do that. So I'm gonna come back in about 15 minutes and we're gonna actually apply it for real. Let's see what happens. All right, so here it is, guys. Here is the final product just before I glue it down. You can see it kind of cupped. We're about 20 minutes later. And so here I'm gonna do it. I have not done this yet. This is kind of a first for me. And so here we go. Once I once it touches, that's it.
All right, so I'm going to go bit by bit and I'm going to press it down. I have a ridge along here which I'm going to have to press it into. So it's going to be a little bit of a fun challenge. Here we go, into the ridge. I feel like I want something to keep pushing this down for about a half an hour. But I don't have that luxury. Okay, here we go. Second one. I'm looking at my original China marker marks. Okay, so this part is down. Now I'm going to go slowly. Now I got that ridge to deal with. All right, I think we're past the ridge. I'm going to get in and we're going to see how it all works. Right on. Okay, this, this seems to work really well right now. I'll give you an update if it just kind of goes tomorrow morning or something like that, but I doubt it. All right, guys. Whew. All right, so that is really all there is to it. Um, it's relatively simple, but you kind of feel like you're doing a bigger job than you are because you know it's not really reversible easily without leaving residue everywhere and scratches and all that kind of thing. I think I'm successful. I will give you an update. I won't even make this video uh, unless it's all good. So I'm gonna wait for a couple days, see how it works, and then I'm gonna go on a trip in about a week. All right, guys, if you appreciate DIY projects like this, please do give me a like and a subscribe. No skin off your back, and YouTube loves it when you binge on my videos. I don't know if they're binge-worthy, but you know, hey. Guys, until the next time I make my next video, don't know what it's gonna be, DIY, I think it's gonna be a trip documentary, which will be really cool. Stay tuned for that. But get out there, enjoy God's creation, and keep on looking up.